What's up guys, my name is Colin McNeil and welcome to You Laugh, You Lose. I saw a smirk and I caught an, a nostril exhale. I caught a... <laughs> I was coughing. I was oh, coughing. oh, were you? Oh, okay, okay, were you? I'm filling in for the lovely and talented Lisa Dwan, who is on vacation this week. Our guest is Matt Trevet, also known as Sadakist. There's so much drama, we're all such divas. One of the premier casters from the world of CSGO. Now you already know the format of this show. We've got five hilarious videos. and I get to ask him five very difficult questions. What was your lowest point? What was the point where you looked around and you're like, why the fuck am I doing this? That is, if he laughs. That is ridiculous. It's a short one, eh? It's a short one, it's abrupt, it's bold. That's not a real esport, by the way. Matt, welcome to You Laugh, You Lose. I'm really ready to ask you a hard question, so let's get into the first video. If you would be so kind as to click. All right, we can do this. I assume the top one is the first one? Oh yes, sir. All right, let me put these on. What bird has the most elaborate, the most complex, and the most beautiful song in the world? Yo! Ah. The king goes Skitty king pop pop And the poop poop poo boom Skia! Toot toot coo coo boom 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 you done no big shot. Okay. All right, we made it through one. Did we? Kind of. I saw a smirk and I caught an, a nostril exhale. I caught a. <laughs> I was coughing. I was oh, coughing. I was oh coughing. were you? Oh, okay, okay, were you? You know what? I'm gonna give you that one, and I'm gonna go I'll ahead. I'll let you pick on that one. Oh, you let me pick? Okay. I'll let you pick. How about this? Okay. Make an agreement. Okay. So as I know from talking to a couple interviews over over the last few months over the the Score Esports podcast, this esports life is not easy. You have non-stop travel, you've got stress, job security isn't exactly, you know, retire at 65. Do you ever think of saying, fuck it, going home being a wedding photographer? <laughs> Thought of a wedding photographer. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think about sometimes like, can I grind this out any further? Um, I think in some ways like the race car was supposed to buy me time and that it would distract me and then in other ways it's taken money out of the account that I probably should have invested. Um, so it is, a, it is about thinking long term for all the same reasons you said, like the security can kind of end. Um, and I have thought about like, you know, where would I be in five years? Can I continue traveling at this rate? You know, I think a lot of people think that the travel is glamorous, but at the same time it can be kind of lonely at times and, and there's lots of factors. So I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, I've definitely, it's crossed my mind. Mm. Yes. The end of Krakow, the end of the major, it was, a, it was a possibility, but I think at this point, like I'd say at least another two or three years before I'm at a real position to make that decision. Okay, in esports time, that's a long time. That is a long time, yeah, so yeah. don't quote me on that. Okay, but. fair enough, fair enough. And I only said wedding photographer, by the way, because I know you're yeah. photographically inclined, and that's a good way to make a living uh, as someone who likes to snap the camera. Okay. Why don't we move on to the second All video? Right. No nostril exhaling this time. I'm gonna be watching real close. Okay, let's do it. All done? Yeah. I think that one, I, I think I, I think you did pretty cleared good. Cleared that one with ease. I saw some twinging at the corner of your mouth, but I couldn't possibly let that go. It was go. amusing, but it wasn't it was amusing, wasn't it? All right, I'll let you get off easy on this one. Okay. I want you to tell me about the worst, maybe the funniest incident of intercaster drama you've had without naming any names, of course. Oh, geez. Uh... There's so much drama, we're all such divas. Probably, I can't, well, it's, it's already been publicly announced on Drop the Bomb season one, I don't know what episode. Um, was probably when Henry G was, like we always talk about the cream pie thing with Moses, and it's, it was Henry's originally that cream pied him and made the joke, creamy Moses, and well, Anders kind of made the whole meme out of it. Um, but he jokingly <laughs> said, don't, uh, he brought out his laptop or something and he said like, don't judge me if I open it and there's porn on it. And he opened it and there was public cream pies. And we were like, Jesus Henry, the obsession is real. I did name names, but it's already publicly out there, so I can. 
Um, and oh, it was kind of a big joke, and I think I, I honestly think he did it as a joke, but it was hilarious at the time. And Jason didn't know what to say, and Pansy, who was in the cab with us, because we were all on the way to the airport, was just like, what just happened? Like, that is ridiculous. Holy. So I think that's probably the, the funniest caster moment. In terms of drama, there's been a lot. Um, you go back to Cluj, I had an incident with one caster that was rather argumentative over some things that I did that I didn't think were that bad, that were misunderstood, and political implications were suddenly made aware to me. Um, and then Krakow was kind of dramatic in the fact that I did tell some of my colleagues, like, this might be my last event, and then that kind of brought out some interesting emotions. More from them, actually. I was kind of fine with it. Did you, then, did you tell them that before you were finished the job? The event, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it, was really? just, it was just like the situation where we were just talking. I was like, yeah, I don't know. All right. I say it's time to move on to video number three. Oh, Marrow Trois. Unfortunately, you saw the thumbnail I did, for this. Oh, I, I haven't seen any thumbnails. I, I hope, don't hope it doesn't give it away. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna look. Nerf this. Wow. That is ridiculous. It's a short one, eh? It's a short one, it's abrupt, it's bold. That's not a real eSport, by the way. Oh. It's not a real, what's not a real eSport? That's from Overwatch, isn't it? It is? Yeah, it's not a real eSport. Oh, why do you say that? Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're that blizzard? He's just kidding. He's just kidding. On that awkward note. <laughs> I'm that was th way different than I expected from the thumbnail, by the way. You thought it was gonna be like what, like porn? Or it, well, like softcore maybe. Yeah. Like it was, it was up there. That was the original video, I'm sure, yeah, right? Exactly, and, and someone just edited it. Just put a nice <laughs> fart in there. Yeah, it was, cool. it was a wet one. Yeah, yeah, it makes it gives you some confused emotions, for sure. What is, A, okay, the best cast you've ever done? The game you walked away where you've been like, fuck yeah. Yeah. And then B, the worst. I mean, the worst would be any of the online casts currently, where okay. we're holed up in a studio and... I mean, the thing is with Pro League is it's essential, and teams have to be there, because in order to qualify or get invited even, not even qualify, but to invite to ESL events, you kind of have to be in the Pro League okay. and be in their system, and it's also really important for the HLTV ratings, which have kind of become the, the official ratings, if you will. Indeed. Um, but the thing is that even though it's essential is a lot of the teams use it as practice or don't care as much about it because they just came back from an event yeah. or maybe they just made a roster change and you don't see the same caliber of CS that you see on LAN, naturally, mm -hmm. not to mention the atmosphere and environment. And a lot of those times, I'm not gonna lie, like I'm coasting. And I'm not trying to coast, it's just like that's about as much interest as I can give those games. And there's times when I'm just like browsing HLTV stats or Twitter or even F1 stuff. And, mm. and it's like, it's just all I can do to bring myself to, to keep my mind busy. Um, so I'll admit like some of the online stuff's probably the worst. I can't think of one specific game that's been really, really bad. There's been incidents where I've been mad at myself where I'll trip over a word or something, and, mm. but I'm just self-critical. The best is, I mean, there's been a lot of good ones as of, as of late. You're only as good as kind of the games you're given, but I think the one that stands out for everyone's, everyone's mind and my highlight reel was the New York Finals last year, 2016. Mm -hmm. And even though Cobblestone was like a really one-sided game, there was a ton of clutches. Snacks had one on the op, obviously the one on the pistol that everyone yes. talks about. And the one on the pistol was interesting too, because like, even my dad and I were talking about this just the other day, like, because he watched it back and he was like, you said everything right, but everything you said could have just been forgotten instantly. Like I started off with like the big apple, Snacks is hungry. Okay, yeah. Snacks dies. Well, that line dies with it, that's gone. Right. And then he gets the first kill, he's still three to find, and it's like pretty unlikely he wins it. And then like the old guardian bye-bye, because he like peeked out stupidly, like get wrecked. And like the whole thing just worked. And like if, I don't know, I, I don't think you could, like I don't think I could cast another play in completion for a 30 second window that well again. It just like, it was just a lot of luck with it. So that one was the one where I was like, wow, that was that was actually it. And that was at the time when we, we were kind of getting up there as a duo. And I think that was the moment when everyone was like, oh damn, like they're actually legit. Obviously there's the infamous uh, Sadikus Rap God video, which has been remixed a number yeah. of times. Yeah. I particularly like, uh, what is it? Uh, he's the needle, they're the thread. They that, I can't take credit. Okay. Can't take credit. That's from a Me Without You song. Okay. Uh, so Me Without You, I think is probably the best lyrics I think poetry classes should, I'm not really that big into linguistics and Oh no, you only quote poetry on uh, like live on air. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think I think that the, like Aaron Wies is probably, or Aaron Wies, I think it's Aaron Wies is how you say it. Uh, I think he's like the best lyricist of all time. And like his lyrics are nuts. And I've actually quoted him like probably 40 times that people don't realize. I did it in the major, I quoted like an entire verse and people were like, what? <laughs> like, what did you just say? Yeah, it? so, but it's, it's a lie, yeah. It, um, She's like a hot cloth on a needle, a fevered head, and like a needle she leads me, and I follow like thread, tie me up on tie. Yeah, anyway, it's 
I love that yeah. hawk. It is it's perfect though for when you're baiting someone. It's perfect. It's like oh yeah. So, but I can't take credit, and I usually do when people say like, "Oh, what a line!" I'll usually say like, "No, that one's actually not mine. That one." And I've I've said that a few times. So. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Shall we move on to number four? Let's do it. Headphones on. Hi, I'm Renata Bliss, and I'm your freestyle dance teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry that girl's life is like that. <laughs> Yo, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh I found God. that clip last night. I was <laughs> dying. I watched it like four times. I was laughing out loud every single she's, time. Uh, oh, she's still probably better than me at the bar. I'll give her that. Yeah, me too. She's not, not great. So that means, that was no judges needed. That was a laugh. Yeah, that was um, a laugh. I'll give you that and one. And that was my baby, so I'm really happy. Okay. So I'm gonna ask you the quote unquote hard, hard question. What was your lowest point? What was the point where you looked around and you were like, why the fuck am I doing this? Mm. Um, I, I would say that came, so because it was like, obviously there were struggles to get into it, but I didn't really think that it was gonna become a full-time career. Like I, even my dad was like, oh, this is pretty legit after I did X Games. And I was like, yeah, it's cool, but like I don't really see it blowing up. Mm -hmm. um, I think that because of that, like a lot of the struggles at the start, I just kind of did as a hobby. And I didn't really care about pay or like, oh, I didn't get games. I was like, yeah, whatever. It's just, it's just something I'm doing on the side anyway. I was still working with photography. Um, so I think the darkest moments actually came with some of the travel. So there was times in Cologne when, you know, and this was after I'd made it, which isn't what you'd expect, right? right? Exactly. Like this is, this is, it's, but it was, it was kind of like, uh, like, like, well, for example, like when we did Sydney last year, we had to fly back on from Sydney on, I think it was a Monday because the tournament was over Tuesday, a Monday we fly. We landed Tuesday morning by the time we got to Germany and we were on air that night. And there was one round I remember I was talking and I just went, wait a minute. Like I actually fell asleep while talking and I was like, I have no idea what I just said. I have no idea. Like that's a pretty dark moment when you think about it. Like when you're that tired and you're that worked and you're that grinded. And like, I think the last pro league season, which was during that time was probably the darkest because like, we were so wrecked. Um, everyone was at each other's throats. Like every weekend I had off, I was like renting a car, driving through the mountains. I go to Istanbul because it was like an hour flight. Now I have like four days off and I'm like, don't talk to me, I'm locking myself in my room. And I'll just like sleep because it's just like, you're so exhausted. So it's, I think that like, it's been like a realization of like, wait a minute, this isn't healthy. Now you're talking about your broadcast career. Your dad was actually a radio broadcast professional. Yep. Did he give you any nuggets of advice? He's still better at pre-recorded stuff than I am. Okay. So live stuff, he admits like I kill him, but okay. whenever I do a scripted thing, he just makes fun of me endlessly. He used to do so much advertising and stuff. So yeah, he's way better at that. He did, he, the, so the first time I did an ESC Atlanta, I wasn't being paid. At the time it was like, uh, I was flying down to Dallas. I, I was actually losing money on it, but I was doing it anyway. Um, like they pay my flights and stuff, but by the time I bought food and stuff down there and yeah. yeah. Um, and I remember doing it a few times and my dad was like, okay, it's cool, but like, are you getting paid? And I was like, no. And he's like, well, then why are you wasting your time? And then when I did X Games, I got a bunch of messages from people being like, hey, good job, hey, good job. That was really great, really good. And then I scrolled down, there's one from my dad being like, your voice sounded like shit. We need to work on your breathing. Oh. And I was like, whoa, all right, he's on board. He's in. And that was when I knew, like, even though he's being hard on me, I was like, okay, let's do it then. And like, he started teaching me diaphragm breathing and techniques for like adulation and how to throw. And yeah, he brought me a bunch of his radio. He hadn't done radio forever. Like, I think he enjoyed it because he brought a bunch of his radio stuff back. Okay, I think it's time for video number five. Video number five. Are okay. you ready? The final video. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. You had your one laugh. That's all you get. Don't fuck with me. I have the power of God and anime on my side. Wait, you so you had a disadvantage because I think we've all seen that one before. Okay. It's it's pretty common meme. Yeah. Okay, so you you did pass that one with flying colors. Uh, so I'm going to ask you uh, a relatively easy question, which is, uh, you're a former Call of Duty pro. 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 Yes. yes. Yeah. That's at the time, true. at the time in which that was an operative word, but yes. So what's better, COD or CS? CS um, it has to be considered better for a number of reasons. It's more skill based. The economy system in the game creates a positive and negative reinforcement that enforces strategic play, uh, enforces more tactical decisions from an in-game leader and from a team overall. I think the, the maps are more rigid. The gameplay is, it's kind of like a catch-22. Like it's, it's, CS is very based on movement and movement can make or break you, but it's less based on movement than COD and that COD was a very fluid game and you were constantly like lean peeking or, you know, 
drop shotting or prone, you know, strafe jumping even in that game and, and sprint jumping and getting even mechanics in COD 4 on PC when you had like 125 or 250 FPS that you could get an extra step that would give you like a jump me mechanic. So it's like, I think there was more movement in COD, but it, it's more punishing in CS because it's more rigid in the way that the maps play. COD 4 uh, and COD 2 were the, were the best on PC, but I think if you, if you black and white question, CS is way better. If there was another game, you know, in 2017 that you would care to cast, PUBG. PUBG? Maybe. I don't know. For yeah, real? possibly. I think PUBG is hilarious. I don't know how it's going to do as an esport. I'm, I'm hopeful for it. I think problem is it's so much RNG, right? Like it is very much an RNG game. Late game, you can get some skill into it. Yes. Late game, when you get loot and you're in position and you actually start to get a read of where people are, you can get some skill into it. But it's RNG based on how the playing goes, where the loot is when you drop, how many people drop around you, which isn't random per se, but it seems it based on decisions that are based on random algorithms. Yeah. I don't know. It's just really fun. I like playing it. So I, jokingly, PUBG. I think if I was going to do another one, I still, I still have interest in Dota. Um, and honestly, that's probably it right now for for esports that I would be super interested in. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll see where the future goes. Matt, thank you so much for appearing on You Laugh, You Lose. I'm really happy I made you laugh. <laughs> Once one and a half, sure, one and a half. Arguably, maybe twice. Uh, one and a half. Yeah, but it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.